how do we move the United States, China, Russia, India, uh, European Union to to a Bitcoin standard? I'm not entirely concerned about whether governments move or not. In fact, I'd be very happy for them not to move uh, as long as possible so that individuals can accumulate more and more Bitcoin while it's still cheap. So the people will move and the governments will catch up. Yeah, and I think this is kind of what I allude to. I mean, the, the point of the fiat standard, the fiat standard is really a Bitcoin book. And it talks about fiat most of the time, but it does so to analyze Bitcoin and the rise of Bitcoin. In the final chapter, I discuss how I think this relationship plays out. Um, I, I The way that I tend to think of it is that most likely what's going to happen is we're gonna have kind of uh, financial apartheid where there's going to be two monetary systems. One is government controlled and it comes with increasing amounts of surveillance and inflation. And then if you want, you can just opt out of that and get into Bitcoin. And it's likely going to be difficult for governments to stop people from getting into Bitcoin for all of the technical reasons that make it very hard to stop Bitcoin. So then we have this alternative that is Bitcoin, which is not inflationary and does not have a central authority that can censor it. I think um, gradually is my hope and I also think my most likely scenario, but maybe I am biased because everybody thinks what they want is what's gonna happen. I think we're just gonna witness you know, the same relationship because governments make their currency so that they can devalue them and Bitcoin thrives on that. And more and more people are gonna learn, more and more people are gonna find out. And whether it's through curiosity or self-interest or through the destruction of the national currency, all roads lead to Bitcoin. So more and more people are gonna buy Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. And as it goes up, Bitcoin becomes a more significant part of the world economy. And then this is, this is something that the skeptics don't get. Like a lot of the academic skeptics to Bitcoin, you know, they, they offer up all of these theories about why they think Bitcoin can't work and then they present it and they think, you know, they've delivered the knockout blow as if Bitcoin needs their permission or the world is going to need their permission. Well, the reality is people are gonna join Bitcoin out of greed, out of self-interest. Number go up technology is is really what's going to get everybody in. <laughs> yeah. And that's really the Trojan horse for <laughs> fixing the world. You know, come for the greed and stay for the revolution. It's gonna keep going up because people don't like to be poor, um, except for most economists and academics. <laughs> Uh, people don't like to be poor. People don't enjoy getting their wealth destroyed. And they care more about their self-interest than they care about economic theories about whether this works as money or not. They see their cousin escaped hyperinflation and managed to get a bigger house because they bought Bitcoin five years ago. They realize maybe I should stop um, mocking my cousin and start buying more Bitcoin. And this is, I think, an indomitable force that's going to continue. And one thing, um, the, most Bitcoiners tend to lean toward a, an apocalyptic transition. You know, the fiat's gonna collapse, we're gonna get hyperinflation, everything's gonna be terrible, and then we're gonna move to Bitcoin. And I present the case for why I think maybe that might not be the case. Maybe we won't get this kind of apocalyptic scenario. And it's because, and, and this was like the conclusion of the fiat standard, which is once you realize that mining fiat is creating debt, and Bitcoin is allowing, so in order to have fiat money, we need to have people borrow. We need to have people make loans. And the problem if, that fiat money runs into today is that if you wanna save money, if you wanna hold savings, you have a problem. Where do you put your savings? So you put your savings in debt, in the creation of more bonds. Wherever you take your savings, you create a bubble in those things. And this is why we see a bubble in the stock market, a bubble in the bond market, a bubble in housing. It's because people are looking for savings, looking for a place where they can save. All of those things are crappy saving instruments because they're like, the, they're like copper in that there's nothing to stop the people behind them to make more of them. House uh, builders can build more houses, governments can issue more bonds, um, the crappy fraudulent companies can list on the stock market and make more stocks. Well, Bitcoin finally offers us an outlet. We don't need to keep creating more debt. We can invest in this asset that is hard and that is internationally liquid and that nobody can make more of. So there is no bubble in it. There is no mechanism for uh, somebody to increase the supply and bring the price crashing down, like with copper and real estate and bonds. 
So Bitcoin is the way out. And this is why I think there's a good case to be made for why the fiat authorities might embrace Bitcoin because they'll see it is their way out of this enormous um, debt bubble that everybody is stuck in. Particularly the richest and most powerful people in the world and the richest and most powerful governments in the world are the world's biggest borrowers. They're the ones in a lot of debt. So a continuous slow devaluation of the value of that debt as people upgrade and move on to a hard asset that continues to appreciate is the way that we is, is the peaceful way that we wind down the fiat Ponzi, I think. You could see it being like a political part of a political platform for future people that run for president, those kinds of things to address. Obviously, it's not just for the powerful and the rich. The people are bothered by the debt. The people are bothered by everything that you describe with fiat. And if you want to sell yourself in a democracy as a good leader, you might want to make that part of the platform.